G'day everyone, it's Sam Mackay from Enterprise DNA. Today we're going to work out how, uh, how you can discover ha the amount of transactions that are occurring in the last number of N days or X days. So you might want to, in this case, uh, look at each different customer. It could actually be a whole range of different things, right? It could be um, on any dimension. Um, this is more just how you can utilize um, a combination of DAX functions or DAX formula, uh, especially around um, date date tables, uh, to extract a, this particular sort of insight. So we're going to, in this case, we're going to look at okay, well, how many uh, transactions has any particular customer uh, made in the last n days? Um, so let's walk through how I did it. Now, I'm first of all going to show you how you can uh, work out how many transactions. So a very a very simple insight. Um, there's, there's actually a couple of ways. There's actually a couple of ways. Um, what I've got here is the total number of days transa transacting. So say, for instance, a customer bought on uh, bought three different individual products uh, in any particular day. Well, that's only going to return one here because we're going distinct counts of the purchase date. But what you could also do, if you wanted to work out, say, total transactions, you could also use a function like so. You could go count rows uh, and then just count up the number of um, rows in the sales table. So this is going to give you how many individual transactions. So if they did buy three different products in a day, then that's going to be three uh, three transactions. And so if I bring that by, you might, you might see a bit of a um, you know, not too much change there, but maybe in some you will. So for instance, this one, total days transacting and total transactions is 19, so there's one different. Okay, but what I want to do is I want to work out, well, how many days, how many transactions have we made in the last 30 days, or last 60 days in this case? Um, so I'm only, I'm trying to isolate uh, how many um, how many transactions in a particular time period versus in, in total, right? And remember, this can this is more a dynamic calculation. So that as you as you move through time, that sixty days is going to move with you. Uh, so you know today we're look, going to look sixty days backwards, but in a month's time, we're again going to only look sixty days backwards. We're not going to look at any particular individual months, months, etc. So here's the formula in terms of how how I did it, right? And so it's a combination of a few formulas. Now I've used this count rows sales, but in theory, what I could do is I could just I could pop in that measure that I just created. Now I've used variables as well, so I've used a variable to work out. Okay, well, what is the last uh, last sale like last sales day of purchase? Now um, the reason why I've done this is because my um, you could you could very easily put in today here. So if you were if you're looking at a live data set, you could just put in today. But because this is a demo data set, I have to somehow go and work out. Okay, well, what is the very last date in this um, in this data set so that I can in a dynamic uh, so in a uh, for demonstration purposes give you a date to base off, right? So you ordinarily might not need to use this formula. You might be just as fine just going like today, for instance. But in this case, I'm going to go last date. Okay, and then all I'm going to do is, is remember, we're still counting up the number of transactions. We're just changing the context in terms of how we're tr how we're calculating it, and that is exactly what calculate function does. So I'm going to calculate in this case. Think about logically what, how, and what, and how we're doing it. We're going to say, okay, we'll calculate the total transactions, but look at a window. Uh, of only the last 60 days. So that was actually wrong. But so what we're going to do is we're going to say, okay, so uh, let's filter. Let's filter the date table for the last 60 days so that we can then calculate up these total transactions. Now, the way we do that is we use the filter function. We release any filters that may be coming from the date table initially. And then we go and add the filters back on inside of this filter function. So I'm releasing all filters from dates, the entire date table, and then I'm saying iterate through every single date and evaluate is that particular date either um, between the last date minus 60, so that's the last purchase date, and the last date. So we might actually want to even add an equal sign here. And what this particular function is going to do is it's going to open up a window for us to then go and calculate the total transactions in any particular time range, right? So really, really powerful, really, really powerful stuff. 
hopefully hopefully you can see and you can see also how this is quite um uh, you, you can reuse this and that's what's so great is that i can just create a new measure copy it in and say okay well i want to i want to calculate how many transactions in the last 180 days and then i can just go okay there i can drag that in and then you could you know think about how you could branch out even further here you could you could look you can almost look at the sort of say the velocity of of a customer's um, purchasing cycle. You know, are they transacting over you know, or why have they transacted more over the near term than they have historically over the last one eight eight? Was it because we gave them a um, you know some discounts, or was there some particular marketing outreach that we did, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. So there's so there's lots and lots of different applications um, for this particular one or for this particular insight. Okay, so I'm gonna wrap things up there. Um, hopefully you can find a way to reuse this and, and it's great how this is more sort of dynamic, right? Because this this last date would change with your data. So so it's a really, really powerful way to calc and then ultimately showcase um, showcase insights. So. Um, so, you know, really powerful stuff. Okay, all the best. You can download this uh, resource. Just check out Enterprise DNA TV resources. Um, you can find all of that uh, and more at Enterprise DNA online. Check out the description. So, uh, if, you, if you like the content, uh, throw us a like. Really appreciate it. And don't forget to subscribe to Enterprise uh, DNA TV. Heaps and heaps of um, great Power BI content coming to you um, now and, uh, and certainly in the future as well. Okay, all the best. Take care.